Good afternoon, friends. Welcome back to Stories with Pastor Macy. We took a break from Stories with Pastor Macy last week for camp meeting. If you haven't had a chance to see camp meeting, I'll put it in the first comment below, a link to uh, the Oregon Conference YouTube page, which has all kinds of wonderful programs for children and for adults. There are three different age levels for children, uh, preschool, grade school, and juniors. And you might see a familiar face in uh, those children's programs if you go look at them. We were in the midst of a five-part story, Benny the Beaver, and today we are continuing with part three. When Benny awoke, he noticed that the water was low and found it flowing out of the hole again. Being patient, he carried back the trash and closed it. Then he cut down a small poplar nearby and ate part of it. To him, this place had real possibilities. Of course, the dam would have to be raised and the ditch problem solved. Next morning, the farmers, again without water, gathered at the intake to see who was troubling them. The ditch was blocked again. This time they saw the tree that Benny had cut. So it was a beaver. They called the game warden right away. The game warden came out. He saw the ditch. He saw where Benny had plugged the ditch. Also where he had cut down the apple trees. Then he drove farther upstream and looked at the pond from which Benny had come. He saw that there was no more food around. Still farther on, he saw the road flooded where the beavers from the upper pond had plugged a culvert to make a new dam. Beavers in the mountains are very useful in slowing down streams, preventing floods, and storing water for the dry seasons. But these beavers were making a lot of trouble because they were too close to the farming community. The game warden knew of a place in the mountains where they would be welcome and where they could do a lot of good. The game warden got a trapper to come out with a truck and some large traps. These are not the kind of traps that fur trappers use. They had large jaws at the mouth of a steel netting bag. One of these he placed in the shallow water near the opening of the ditch in Benny's pond. Another he set in the water near the orchard, where Benny had left some apple tree twigs and leaves. Others he set in shallow water around the home pond and wherever else there were signs of beavers along the creek. Some of the traps he baited with twigs and other he placed where the animals would have to cross and would likely trip them and get caught. Benny the beaver had been sleeping in his den and he knew nothing of what was going on with the game warden and the trapper. When he came out that night, he noticed that the water was low again. He hurried to the ditch. When he came to the shallow water and was about to walk to get some trash, water flew up all around him. The trap had flipped up and Benny was caught. He pushed this way and that, but he couldn't budge the heavy steel jaws. He tried to bite his way out, but the meshes of the net were steel, and even his sharp teeth could not cut them. The trap didn't hurt Benny, and since he was in shallow water, he wouldn't drown, so he just sat there and waited. That was all he could do. Early the next morning, the trapper came out with his truck again. Benny snarled when the man came near, but the trapper spoke gently and patted the young beaver through the uh, netting of the trap. Then he lifted the trap and beaver into the back of his truck and drove on to look at the other traps. The one near the orchard was not strong, sprung and he left it. Seven of the other traps had beavers in them and the trapper loaded them into the truck too. He splashed water over the beavers in the traps, covered them with a piece of canvas and drove off to a far away mountain valley. The game warden had arranged with a rancher who lived below a burned over area to help plant the beavers. At last, the jolting of the truck stopped and they were in the yard of the rancher. Pack horses were ready for the last part of the trip. Benny and the other beavers were taken out of the traps and dropped into wet burlap bags. 
These would be comfortable and allow them to breathe without trouble. The horses were loaded with two beavers on each side. And away they went on a trail into the mountains. After an hour, they came to a little pond. Benny, Ruffo, and two other beavers were turned loose. They saw a pile of new brush along the shore and hid in it. The rest of the beavers were taken on up the trail and turned loose there. That is the end of our story for today. We will read part four of Benny the Beaver soon, and I hope you'll join me as we figure out what's going to happen to Benny in his new home. You know, a lot of times we as humans, we don't like change. And beavers don't like change either. I wouldn't want to be Benny to not know what was happening, to be thrown in a trap, to be slung into a burlap bag, travel on a horse to a new home. But you know what? Sometimes God is just the trapper and the farmer. They are trying, God is trying to do what is best for us, just like they were trying to do what is best for us for Benny. So we'll see how Benny's life changes in his new home when we read part four soon. I'll see you later. Bye.